This is the fascinating story of how a nonprofit that was created by some of the best known names in Silicon Valley to focus on responsible AI is now a private business with a multi billion dollar valuation that has caused a rift with some of the most powerful players in tech. OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT. And since it became publicly available in November 2022, ChatGPT was the quickest company ever to get to 1 million users, surpassing the likes of Instagram, Spotify, and Facebook, achieving the feat in just five days. It has Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX, Tesla, and owner of Twitter, and Sam Altman, ex-president of Y Combinator as its founders, amongst others, all of who invested their own money in 2015 to get the nonprofit off the ground. But along the way, the core principle of operating OpenAI as a nonprofit dramatically changed, and the company is now privately owned with a valuation of over $25 billion. So, what was the initial vision behind OpenAI, and why did it change status from a nonprofit to a for profit business? What conflicts has this given rise to amongst founders Elon Musk, Sam Altman, and the others? What does it mean now that OpenAI is a business focused on having to make returns for investors, as opposed to purely advancing AI responsibly and openly? And does this compromise the future security of AI? OpenAI was founded in December 2015 by Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Ilya Sutskavar, and a few other individuals. In fact, it was Elon who named the company. The credentials of Elon and Sam are well known, but the other individuals are also highly impressive. Greg Brockman was the CTO of payments company Stripe, and Ilya Sutskavar is one of the world's leading experts in machine learning, having previously worked at Google AI. With this quality of founding team, the nonprofit was capitalized with $1 billion in commitments by Silicon Valley's heavy hitters, including Reid Hoffman, founder of LinkedIn, Jessica Livingston, founder of Y Combinator, Peter Thiel, founder of PayPal and Palantir. In addition to the founders, Elon alone committed around $50 million to the initiative. Elon has said that he was motivated to think of the safety of AI following a conversation he had with Google's Larry Page, who had acquired British company DeepMind in 2014, but who seemed ambivalent about the potential risks of AI. Elon expressed concerns about the potential risks associated with artificial general intelligence and believed that it should be developed in a safe and responsible manner. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. The founders of OpenAI collectively believed that AI could potentially surpass human intelligence and have far reaching effects on society, both positive and negative. As a result, OpenAI was established as a research organization. The OpenAI Charter was all about collaboration, sharing, and transparency, with a long-term focus and for the public good, with ethical considerations at the forefront. The OpenAI Charter talked about ensuring AI is used for the benefit of all and that the fiduciary duty is to humanity. The commitment was one to making AI safe, but being on the cutting edge of technology whilst cooperating and sharing knowledge. The founders committed to publishing most of their AI research to contribute to the global scientific community. In other words, making their work open source. Over the years, OpenAI has made significant contributions to the field of AI, particularly in the area of deep learning and natural language processing. So why did they pivot OpenAI from a non-profit to a for-profit business? Well, it's fair to say there was disagreement internally in terms of the way forward for OpenAI, which led to rifts amongst the founders, but we'll get to that in a minute. OpenAI became a for-profit business in 2019, and as the team worked on OpenAI in the preceding years, what became apparent to them was that they needed to change something. We started as a nonprofit. We learned early on that we were going to need far more capital than we were able to raise as a nonprofit. Essentially, Sam felt that OpenAI was being hindered from making a dent in the world of AI due to its legal structure. The founders of OpenAI realized that the timeline for AI development and its potential societal impact might be sooner than initially anticipated, and they needed to move quicker, which meant raising more money over a shorter time period. By becoming a for profit company, OpenAI could raise unlimited capital from investors they readily had access to and could attract the best talent in the world by offering competitive compensation packages. Perhaps naively, OpenAI underestimated the advances competitors would make that could leave OpenAI behind and potentially make the entity irrelevant if it struggled to raise large amounts of capital fast. Google Brain, for example, had blown open a new frontier where AI could improve endlessly, but that meant feeding it unlimited amounts of data to train, which meant astronomical costs to allow it to do this. OpenAI would have been taking note, and no doubt would have been nervous. One of the other reasons for changing the legal structure to a for-profit was because the team thought making everything open source may have the opposite effect of that intended. I.e., rather than serving humanity's best interests, it could actually invite trouble. Despite this monumental change in the business, the founders insist that the underlying vision remains the same. The shift to becoming a for-profit paved the way for big tech VC firms to invest in OpenAI with the likes of Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, and Founders Fund, all having invested since the change in corporate structure. Microsoft has since continued to invest billions into the startup, 
with a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment. The new term OpenAI uses to describe the business is a capped profit company, a term used to articulate the fact that under the revised model, investors' returns are capped 100 times their investment. So an investor with $10 million invested cannot get a return greater than $1 billion. Not exactly a small cap, and given the growth and future applications for AI, it could be relatively easily uh, achieved for many investors to make 100 times of their investment very quickly. This cap is expected to be lower for any new funding received from new investors coming in though. Any remaining value, meanwhile, is expected to permeate to the non-profit part of OpenAI. This is how Sam Altman describes a new corporate structure. There is a subsidiary capped profit so that our investors and employees can earn a certain fixed return. However, critics of this talk about the fact that Microsoft, a for-profit behemoth with shareholder interests top of mind already has excessive leverage, being given permission to commercialize the tech through gaining exclusive licensing rights to the company's GPT-3 model, while also becoming its exclusive cloud provider. For his part, it's notable that Som Altman reportedly took no equity in the new for-profit entity, an unusual decision for the boss of a tech firm, but a decision that helps align himself with the early vision of OpenAI. But what does co-founder and one of the richest men on the planet think of this? Elon has made no secret of the fact that he believes the direction OpenAI has taken goes against the agreed upon initial intention for OpenAI. So, so you're very disappointed in what's happened there in terms of it becoming a for-profit. I, I, I take any action? I, I, I sue them in some way? I, I, I do think that there's some, I, I, look, it does seem weird that something can be um, a non-profit uh, open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. Elon resigned from the board in 2018, a move that, at the time, was described as a decision taken to eliminate potential future conflicts. As things that OpenAI developed with the commercial partnership with Microsoft, Elon got more concerned. And, and, and then I also think it's important to understand the, the like, like, when push comes to shove, let's say they do create some, some digital super intelligence, almost godlike intelligence, well, who's in control? Yeah. And, and what ex exactly is the relationship between OpenAI and Microsoft? Um, and I do worry that uh, Microsoft actually may be more in control than, say, the leadership team at OpenAI realizes. Um, I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. So they essentially have a great deal of control. At any point, Microsoft could cut off OpenAI. Disagreements that usually occur behind closed doors in boardrooms are seen playing out on Twitter and YouTube. This is what Sam Altman had to say about the very different view Elon has about the direction OpenAI has taken. Elon is obviously attacking us some on Twitter right now on a few different vectors. And I have empathy because I believe he is understandably so really stressed about AGI safety. I'm sure there are some other motivations going on too, but that's definitely one of them. The other motivation Sam was referring to relates to insider conversations at the time, not widely reported, that there was an internal power struggle at OpenAI in early 2018, Elon's concern was that OpenAI had fallen fatally behind Google. And Elon's solution was to do what we've seen him do at Tesla and at Twitter, take control and run the business himself. The other founders were not as excited about that prospect, and Elon resigned from the board weeks later. Whatever the reality, rumor has it that Elon is on a mission to develop his own rival to OpenAI, and has pulled OpenAI's Twitter firehose of data as a clear sign of his intent. The battle around the right way to develop AI is hotting up. But what does this mean for AI more broadly, and possibly the future of humanity? Well, no doubt the stakes have been raised. If OpenAI is fundamentally ran on principles of investor returns, no different to Google and DeepMind, isn't the development and training of the AGI compromised from the start, given it's a closed loop? When Sam Altman testified in front of Congress recently, this is what he had to say. We think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. For example, the U.S. government might consider a combination of licensing and testing requirements for development and release of AI models above a threshold of capabilities. Risks are recognized and regulation will be required. Elon articulates the dangers of AI and the potential insufficiency of regulation to help. AI is more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. Regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. That's correct. 
if that's the case for AI and we only put in regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. Change in legal structure of OpenAI may be seen as the pivotal point in history for the way AI develops and for how AI influences us in the future. Only time will tell. Some sort of oversight or regulation of AI is going to be essential given the power of this technology. But how do you regulate a technology like AI? Check out the video on the screen to see how the best minds in tech are thinking about this.